Hello, this is a demonstration how uh, the game, uh, online electronic beer game, will be played uh, in class, or at least how you should practice before the game. Uh, first of all, you should go to your CNU Scholar <coughs> page, Supply Chain Management, and the link to enter the game is posted right here in the simulation game folder. So click on the simulation game, and at the bottom you will see registration for online e-beer game. It's the same link as to access the game itself. So when you click on this link, it will take, take you to the login page. So I'm going to enter my login and the password, and you should do that too. Um, this login and password you established uh, earlier when you registered for the game. So when you log in, you'll see this page. The page says that you are not yet part of any team, which is true. I'm going to assign people randomly to teams right before the game will begin in class. Uh, so right now you can prepare for the game. And for that matter, you, you have an option to choose between transparent game and the game with hidden data. So let's go ahead and practice with transparent first. Now in the, in the uh, actual game that we will play in class, you'll be playing the game with the hidden data. So transparent is just to illustrate how the whole supply chain works. So out of this menu, you select practice transparent first and then click the button start. And on this page, you can see the counter, time counter. So in 55 seconds, you'll be redirected to the game. And uh, when you practice the game, you will always be playing the role of the retailer, okay? So uh, in order to start the game before the timer, just go ahead and start the practice. And it will take you to this page. As you can see, this is you, retailer. And then there is a wholesaler. And then there is a distributor and manufacturer. And here's the counter that tells you that the game will start in six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. So what happens is, you are a retailer, it says initializing, you're sending an order to the wholesaler. And at the same time, you receive the previously placed order of four and your inventory goes up. Then customer order comes in, takes away four units, your inventory goes down to eight. And these four units is transmitted to the uh, wholesaler. And the counter starts all over again. So now you have 26 seconds to make your next decision. And you can see that everything is disabled for you except for that button, right? So uh, let's say I want to order uh, six units for the next time period. When I click the submit button, what happens is my order of six is transmitted to the wholesaler. My previously placed order of four comes in, raises inventory to 12. Customer order of four come in, take away four units, and my inventory goes down to eight. And now, my order of six is being transmitted to the wholesaler uh, and the counter is about to start again. And there it is, 25 seconds for me to make my next decision. So let's say that again, I want to order, now I don't want to order six units anymore. How about I'm going to order two units? So I'm not saying that this is how you should play the game. I'm just practicing, right? So I submit my order. Here is the order of two being transmitted. The previously placed order of four comes in 12 inventory. Customer demand of four comes in, takes away four units, I'm down to eight. And note that my next order, six units, that is about to come in. I placed it actually two time periods before, right? So it does not immediately uh, pops up, uh, pop up in my, in my uh, incoming shipments because it takes, uh, a three time periods really uh, for, for that to show up at my warehouse. So now I have 15 seconds. All right, so my inventory is eight, it's about to become 14. So I think I'm going to scale it down to two again. And then you submit before the time runs out, obviously, right? So my order of two comes out, my six shipment come in, that's 14 minus four, I'm down to 10, and you will see the change here in the inventory graph also, okay? Um, transmitting orders. Uh, so, yep, 
So you can see that uh, my inventory goes up and now I have 23 seconds to make my next decision. Well, I still want to lower my inventory, right? Uh, so how about I make the order of two and then submit that. This practice game will go for 10 rounds. So I'm well, almost halfway through. So my order of two comes in. Now I'm down to 12. My order from customer takes four units out. And now I'm down to eight units. And the whole supply chain also works. Uh, this is called transparent because you can see what everybody is doing, what orders are being transmitted between the parties, what orders coming out, and what kind of inventory they have. Okay, That's not the game that we're going to play. All right, so I have 17 seconds to decide. Let's say I want to order two again. So I click Submit button. Now you can see my inventory actually will start going down, right? Because two units come in that I ordered two periods before. That, that's 10. Now next customer will take away four units. Now I'm down to six. And after that I'll get two more units. That's eight. For minus four, I'm going to be down to four, right? So, and you can see that uh, yeah, my inventory went down from 8 to 6, okay? And now I have 24 seconds to decide again. All right, so I'm going to order, well, let's do take uh, two units again. Submit. So order goes out for two. Order shipment comes in from wholesaler. That's my eight units. And I have four units coming in and four units getting out. Alright, so my inventory is down to four units and therefore the next thing that I will see is going to be yeah, four units just like that. Okay, so now suppose I want to order four units and uh, consequently I should see them coming in like two time periods later, right? So I submit my order of four two units come in, that's going to be six Four customer order take me down, takes me down to two, right? Yep, and you will see update of this graph. My inventory goes down. So now my order of four is out. Okay. And I have 23 seconds to decide. So suppose I want to order four units again. <coughs> So now you can see that my order is transmitted to the wholesaler. Then it, uh, the shipment from uh, from retailer comes in. I have four units. Four units are taken out. I have no inventory, so it's a good thing that I ordered before, right? And you can see that my inventory will update all the way down to zero at that point. Yeah, zero. Okay. So this is the uh, this is going to be probably the last uh, uh, round of the game. So. I submit the, uh, well, let's say I submit an order for six. Doesn't matter because the, uh, the practice will stop. Okay, so four units will come in and four units will be taken out, and I'll, I will end up with nothing. No inventory. Okay, so my shipment of four, inventory is four. The order of four takes my inventory out. Okay. All right, transmitting orders. I have one more, uh, one more order, right? So let's say I'm going to order five. Not that it's going to matter. Game over. Okay. So uh, this graph shows you how your inventory was progressing. So you started with eight, and then for several periods you were at eight. And then it goes up to 10 because I started to order more, right? And then as I started to order less, my inventory started to go down. Uh, but if I would uh, keep ordering less and less than my incoming demand, then obviously my uh, backlog will start to accumulate. So I will cross into the negative inventory, okay? So uh, that's how you play transparent game. And in the transparent game, the advantage of the transparent game is you can see the entire supply chain. You can see actually right here that my orders uh, that I started to place for less and less inventory too, they finally are making uh, their way up to the entire, you know, through the entire supply chain all the way to the manufacturer, right? 
and the manufacturer starts making two units and send down two units etc etc okay so it, it takes some time for changes of the orders at the retailer to propagate throughout the entire supply chain and then it, of course it, it has the effect uh, downstream as well after that okay so transparent game again the advantage of that is that you uh, you see what orders are being distributed in the supply chain and what shipments are being made uh, uh, what kind of inventory everybody has manufacturer distributor and wholesaler and of course yourself included uh, but that's not the game that we're going to play so let's um, go back and again this is a practice mode right uh, and from the menu I'm going to select practice with hidden data and that is the game that we will be playing in class. So I'm going to click start. And again, you're placed uh, in the position of the retailer. But uh, when the actual game begins uh, in class, uh, you will be randomly assigned position. So somebody will play as the wholesaler, somebody will play as a distributor, and somebody will play as the manufacturer. Now, distributor and wholesaler are similar to the retailer. In what sense? They take an order from the previous uh, company downstream. They make decision and they transmit them to the upstream company. They receive the shipments from the upstream company and they send the shipments to the downstream company. Manufacturer is a little bit different. They still accept orders from distributor, but they don't order it from anybody. They make manufacturing decisions. So those of you who will be playing manufacturer position should be aware of that. Okay. So if you're randomly placed in the manufacturer seat, then you will make uh, decisions about how many units to produce okay and the game is about to begin click start to initiate the game okay so you can see the same thing really right but uh, you now are aware only of your own inventory and shipments everything else is non-transparent everything else is shaded right and it says uh, time remaining so our game will start practice will start in three seconds right so right now it looks like I'm transmitting the order of 4 to the wholesaler. And my inventory is 8, but I don't see what's coming in and what kind of demand I have. Now I can see that. Order of 4 comes out. Shipment of 4 comes in. 12 is my inventory. Customer demand of 4 takes 4 units out. I'm down to 8. And now the order, new order is about to come in in the next week. And the next shipment is about to arrive, but I don't see them yet. Okay, so I'm kind of acting in the blind. And also you can see that uh, everything else in the supply chain is not transparent to me. That actually reflects the reality because in uh, actual life, uh, companies don't see all that, right? Don't, they don't see what the supply chain has. So I'm going to lower my order down to two. How about that? And then I click submit button before time runs out. And now my inventory order to the wholesaler is transmitted shipment of four from the wholesaler comes in so i have 12 units four units of customer demand comes out and uh takes out my four units and i'm down to eight and the game at that point does all these orders redistribution and shipments in the rest of the supply chain which we do not see so we're flying blind essentially right and i have 22 seconds again to decide now how about i'm going to knock it down to I don't know, three. How about three? Submit. And that will tell you how many uh, how many units of inventory you will have. So four units come in. I have 12. Customer demand is four. 12 goes down to eight. Four is shipped to the customers. And my next order is about to come in. And my next shipment is about to come in. And I will, uh, in a second, it will tell me, yeah, how many units do you want to order? Well, how about I order only one? just for the heck of it, just to see what will happen. I submit order for one, and notice that two periods ago I started ordering two, right, and then I believe I ordered like three, so two comes in with a delay, I have ten minus four, customer takes away, so I'm down to six units, and uh, my inventory will, uh, in a second, will go down to six, you will see that, yeah, my inventory is down to six, and I have 26 seconds to decide. How about I don't order anything? I order zero. Yeah. Okay. Submit. My order of zero travels up to the wholesaler. 
My order of three, which I placed two time periods ago, comes in and takes my inventory up to nine. Four units of demand take me down to five, and that will be reflected over here in a second. Okay. All right. And there you go. Five units of inventory is right there. So how about I don't order anything again? Just uh, experimenting, right? So my order of zero is transmitted to the wholesaler. My order of one, shipment of one comes in, takes me up to six. Then four units of demand takes me down to only two. And it will be reflected right now when uh, my inventory is down to two. Yep, right there. And now I have again 26 seconds to decide. So now I'm thinking, well, I'm going to be short, right? So I need to start ordering. How about I order six now? And remember, there is a two time period delay between you place the order and it comes in, right? Uh, so I submit. Yep. So I have no inventory coming in. And that's where I'm going to start seeing shortage, right? So nothing comes in. I still have two. But the customer order is four. So therefore, two units I'm shipping. But two units is my shortage. So inventory will immediately tell me that I am just a second yep so this is zero that's weird right zero point four so i'm at minus two right now okay so uh i'm starting to accumulate shortages that's not good so i'm thinking well i'm going to order again six units right oh my god uh remember i placed two orders of zero so this is another order of zero comes in my shortage is going to get worse so two minus two units that's minus six, right? Order came in, but I didn't have inventory, so nothing was sent. Instead of that, I have even bigger shortage. And my, my uh, inventory graph will reflect that. Okay? So I am at minus six right now. Right there. Okay, minus six units. So I need to get back my inventory. And of course, some inventory will come in. I don't remember how many units I ordered, actually. And uh, I don't know what's the... Uh, uh, order size coming in right from the customer so I click submit button order 4 was submitted now I have 6 units coming in and that takes care of the shortage so 6 units are immediately sent out but I have nothing so the next order comes in uh, that's backlog right there right so I didn't have anything to send so it became part of my backlog and my backlog now is smaller right because not minus six it's minus four units okay and then uh, uh let me order six or something okay submit so six units are coming in because i ordered them two periods ago so four units are sent out and two are in an inventory four units demand come in i can send only two and i still have a backlog of minus two units so i'm getting better right as far as the backlog is concerned okay so I'm going to order, I don't know, six. I'm just experimenting here, right? Submit. Okay. Four units are going to come in. Yeah, but that's game over because I ran uh, 10 uh, iterations, right? So here you can see how your inventory was doing, right? You had some inventory. And then when I started to wind down on the inventory, uh, my on my orders, the inventory started to go back. But at some point, I went into the negative area. And then I started to place larger orders, so I started to improve. And that basically reflects what orders I placed, okay? So I started with four, and then I made two units, right, outgoing orders, and then three units, and then one, zero, zero, and then I started to order a lot. Six, six, four, etc., etc. And uh, so these are uh, incoming orders, okay? So what was sent to me? And then shipments. Uh, in, not uh, incoming orders, uh, not what not what was sent to me. It's the incoming orders from my customers, my demand, right? They're all four, and then last one was nothing, zero. But that's where the game stopped. And my shipments, incoming shipments, and outgoing shipments. Uh, outgoing uh, shipments. These are what I sent to my customers, right? So I kept sending uh, four units. And then I had only two units to send, and I had nothing. And then I had, <coughs> I sent six and six. 
and these are my incoming shipments from my wholesaler you can see that they jump up and down because they were reacting to my orders that I placed before right okay so uh, now I'm going to go back and again what you should do before we play the game is you should uh, log in uh, to the eBeer online game and practice with ball transparent where you can see everything and hidden data where you can see only your portion of the game but again uh, reminder in the class what I will do is I will randomly assign you to teams so some of you will be playing retailers part some of you are going to be distributors and wholesalers and somebody uh, some people from the team will play uh, as manufacturers so you'll be making manufacturing decisions and also we'll play with hidden data when you cannot actually see what is uh, in the stock and what are the orders in the rest of the supply chain you will be able to see only your portion of the game I hope that helps so your homework assignment I guess is to uh, log into the game and uh, play as many rounds as you want actually okay so you should come to the game prepared to play and having a pretty good understanding of the dynamics that the game displays okay so I'm going to stop my video